The Reloaded Podcast is a fictional podcast using real-life subjects. It will be offensive to overly sensitive, safe place individuals. Trigger words or phrases will be used, and this is not a podcast for children, meaning all you motherfuckers probably under the age of 25 these days. None of the content reflects the opinions of the creators, but is a reflection of a society that has been told to shut up by the everyone gets a trophy generation. If you are easily offended, don't listen. You've been warned. So here we are, podcast number two. I'm sure I could make a shit joke there. I think you just did. (laughs) I haven't looked, but I think we got like 10 views on the last one. More than one, though. Well, I did watch twice. Anyways, let's get paid first. Yeah, I've seen a lot from those other ads last week. We gotta build an audience, John. Then the dough will roll in. Why don't you just read this one here, John? Okay. What the fuck is this, Tommy? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Just read it. You fucker. Good and bloody tampons. For those days that look like a slaughterhouse movie between your legs. You can stick one of these bad boys up there and clean up that crime scene. Good and bloody tampons at a convenience store near you. Good job. That's fucking gross. Money's money. If you want to get your buzz on with the cheapest beer possible, try Buzz Beer. It might taste like it was filtered through dirty socks, but for about 10 cents a can, you can't beat this swill. I can vouch for that. So what we got going on today? Well, we had a phone call with our creator. We talked to God? Not that creator, Tom. Dave, who wrote and directed Boston Brood. Oh, yeah. That went well. It's no wonder he talked through the mask of foul-mouthed cartoon characters. So what do you want to talk about, Tom? How's about this? I'm just going to bitch. Goes without saying. I know this will be a little old by the time we post this shit. But this dude from Empire? Boba Fett? What? The Emperor? What the fuck? No, the show Empire on Fox. Oh, that rap music show. I don't know. I'm not really the demographic. That's a big word for you, Tommy. I'm not black or into rap dramas. Okay, continue. The fake hate crime dude. Oh, yeah, I saw that on the news. Some people other than our audience have no shame, Tommy. No shame whatsoever. So this dickbag fakes an attack on himself in Antarctic weather in Chicago at like 2 a.m. and claims it was two rednecks wearing Trump hats. They put a noose around his neck and bleached his hair and yelled this is like Trump country or some shit like that. The fuck was he doing out at 2 a.m. in the freezing cold? Of all things, he was buying Subway. And this is where I cracked the fucking case. So, Sherlock, was it the cold? No. Was it the rednecks waiting in the cold at 2 a.m. for the hate crime? Uh Ah. The so-called bleach in his hair that didn't change his hair orange or anything like that? No, but if you shut your fucking trap, I'll tell you. Okay. Shoot, Officer Dibble. After this dude takes a beating, gets bleach over his head, a noose around his neck, by two dudes in one of the most liberal cities in the country, where they're screaming Trump country in the middle of the night, he walks into another camera view with said noose around his neck, and he still has his sandwich. What? All that shit happens, and it's freezing cold. You're involved in a hateful attack, but you're so fucking hungry, you make damn sure you still have your cold-cut sandwich in your hand. Maybe he was hungry. Obviously, if this well-paid TV cock clown went out in freezing cold weather instead of Dine Dash or whatever that fuck that's called, he was hungry, John. Subway is yummy, Tom. Not that fucking yummy. Just saying. It's still good. Can you concentrate here? You're making me hungry. I'll buy you a Subway melt minus the Sub-Zero ass kicking later. My point is, he supposedly just got a foot shot in his ass, a few jaw jabs, bleached, and he held on to his friggin' foot long. I'd hold on to my beer in that situation. True. I'd fight off two ninjas, Conan the Barbarian, Rambo, and the Predator if those fuckers threatened my beer. Maybe he liked the sandwich that much. Nobody but Jared liked Subway that much. Anyway, they found out this asshat was lying, and he had two Nigerian bodybuilders beat his ass. 
More black on black crime. It's very, very sad. I'd feel sad for this sack of balls if he really got a beaten. Black on black, white on black, your Aunt Sally on him. I don't think he's into that. What? Oh, your Uncle Tenny then. Whatever, we ain't talking prostitution. We're talking an ass kicking. Speaking of prostitution. I really didn't want to speak of this, John. We gotta be fair and balanced. Well, what John is talking about is our beloved Mr. Kraft getting it on with some massage whores in Florida. Here's my view. See? I knew you had a view. Mr. Kraft lost his wife to fucking cancer. Fuck you, cancer. This man's a billionaire. So any gold digger out there could try and date him, steal his fortune, etc. The guy's like 77. He's famous. He's running the greatest team in NFL history. And if he wanted a hundred dollar rub down, followed by a happy ending. And a threesome, I might add. God bless that man. If I'm 77 and I can still get motivated for a threesome, I'll feel like Superman. So pretty much this is a non-story. Every time the stupid media makes an issue out of some shit the Pats did, they win another championship. So keep it up, dickholes. We'll get number seven in the name of Mr. Kraft's cock and balls. So back to this empire moron. Somehow, he got all the charges dropped. And he's fucking walking away scot-free. If you and I fake some fucking hate crime or whatever, we'd be getting bent over in prison right now. I don't fucking get it. I guess that's what you call privilege. You mean black privilege? Not white or black. Just a Hollywood rich motherfucker. He does hate Trump, so that gives him privilege right there with fucking everybody else. Bunch of fucking cock clowns. Well, do you want to get to our interview with Dave? So we called this shithead the other day to catch up and see what's been going on in his life since the debacle that was Boston Brewed the movie. Here's a pre-recorded interview with Dave Souza, creator, writer, director, and editor of Boston Brewed the movie and series. Enjoy. I'm going to go have a fucking beer. Hello? Hey, fuckface. How's it going? Don't I have a restraining order on you? To be fair... I'm on the phone. Not within a hundred yards of you. Hey, Dave. Hey, John. How's it going? Drunk as ever. So what do you want? Well, we started the podcast and... Who the fuck would want to listen to you guys? I couldn't even get this shit into one film festival. I know. We talked about that. How you sent it to some so-called edgy underground festivals and everybody pussied out. But we figured you weren't around to animate us. So we're just going to do this thing. You know, I still haven't forgiven you for shaving my dog's ass and tattooing your face on him. Yeah. He doing all right? He died. Ah, shit. Sorry. Anyway, what have you been doing? Well, I left my media job, went out on my own, with two people who had bigger egos than you. Ah, that's not possible, Dave. Shut up. But true. Trust me. I'm not saying who they were, but it was a train wreck. So I found another career field, welding and carpentry. But I'm also working on my own documentary stuff on the side about the St. Louis car scene. We'll show a clip of it at the end here. But it looks a lot classier than Boston Brood. You don't have to stretch real far for that one. Anyway, I'm doing the car thing on my own time. Not having to answer to anyone. Hopefully I can get a screening and release it locally. How's your family? Better since I don't have to chase drunken cartoon characters out of my yard with a gun. I'm all for the Second Amendment. And while you can drop a piano on us tunes... And we won't fucking die. It still fucking hurts. Nah. Listen, I gotta go take care of my kids. Maybe we can get together for a beer after I cancel that restraining order. Really? Probably not. But stay in touch, fuckface. Later. So that went well, right? It was a journalistic masterpiece, Tommy. Next week, we'll have Flame It on Kane on the show. They provided music for the movie because Dave was too cheap to pay for any other music. But they're pretty good. I like their tunes. Really good. They kick ass as far as I'm concerned. Here's Art City Car Culture. We'll see you asshats next week. Go fuck yourselves. The sound and the speed of the car running the person in the other lane and trying to defeat that person. Pulling the emergency brake at 70 mile an hour. To be right next to another car the whole time you're doing it. It's awesome stuff. Well, you got a welder, you got a grinder, you got half a brain, and 
you can make it work. Got it to St. Louis and started rebuilding it. Carson Coffee is an early morning gathering of automotive enthusiasts that uh, you know share the same passion as you. In 1990, I was able to acquire one and I bought it brand new. At one time, it was a drag shirt. It had a 406 Ford in it. All I've got to say is all I've got to say. And this is probably one of the last 10 cars the Doris Company built. The comfort of a luxury car, the interior capacity of an SUV, and the fuel efficiency of a motorcycle all in one car. Who is going to come? We just want to really expose them to all aspects of the automotive culture. Well, my dad was just always working on cars, and I just liked that part of it. St. Louis is awesome. Everybody's uh, got an enthusiasm for cars, whether it's old or new. I built my whole car, and this one here, I bought this one. <laughs> the smell, I like the, I love hearing the engines. A little bit of everything here. It's good for anybody, you know, you just take it as far as you want to take it. If you like what you just heard, please subscribe to Reloaded, the Boston Brood Podcast. And go ahead and share that thing. Spread it around like herpes.